We are the cheese twins. <laughs> come on, come on. Today we are showing you our 2021 Cheese Cave tour. And we are, are your tour, tour guys. guys. My name is Brooklyn. My name's Brienne. So if you will kindly step this way, we will lead you into the right direction. <laughs> First, we will open the door. And here are all of the babies we worked so hard on. <laughs> so up on this shelf, we have mostly all Goudas that are waxed. Um, some of those Goudas are smoked in ash wood and others are just plain. Um, we also have a few or a couple Montreux Jacks in the waxed section, but mostly it's all Gouda. And also a neat thing to note, of course, all of the cheeses in here are raw. And with the exception of, I think, two, they are all made with whole goat milk. We have some Parmesans here from our cow milk that we made. So those are not goat milk, mm -hmm. obviously. Well, this is new cheddar. Newer meaning it's made this year. We're hoping to keep some of our cheddars for maybe up to five years. We've never kept a cheddar that long, so we've made quite a few and are hoping that some will last that long. And it, for those of you who watched our cheddar cheese making video, um, these are the ones that we made using bandage wrap and they're over a year old now um, and we just decided so that we could keep them a little bit more moist we decided to take the bandage wrap off and just put it in vacuum packed bags we wouldn't have had to but we just prefer a little bit of a moisture cheddar so yeah boris is um, a spanish cheese that is covered in smoked paprika uh, traditionally of course like you wouldn't cover it with the plastic wrap but the plastic wrap is definitely helping to just keep it more moist, but this is over a year old and it will just keep on increasing in flavor. And over here, we have another over a year old cheese. This is a beautiful manchego that we made in August to September, 2020. So these can last up to about five years and be absolutely delicious apparently. And the names of the manchego change as it gets older. Most of these here, these white ones are cheddar and gouda. This is some aborus we just had cut into and not finished it so it's it works great to have these bags because you cut into a cheese and then if you're not ready to eat it just go and vacuum pack it again and it's a really good way to just keep it good and fresh. Dry jack. Oh, dry jack is so so good. It's a variation of Montreux jack cheese. Dry jack is really unique we don't even use the regular traditional press for it. We put it in the sink and then put a rock on top of it that makes it this flat patty cake style. And then it is rubbed with olive oil, cocoa, pepper, and coffee grounds. It's really, really tasty. <laughs> she wants the cheese. <laughs> this was a neat experiment this summer. This is just regular soft chev made with the Floridanica culture. Um, and we just hung it for a while, put a bit of salt in. Some of these have just salt, some of them also have garlic in them. And then we put them in plastic bags and then vacuum sealed them. And rather than putting them in the freezer, which is usually what we do with this cheese, we decided we wanted to free up freezer space and see how they did just at the about 10 degrees or so. And they're doing really well. And it also gives it a chance to age a little bit. And when you do not put the Floridanica Chev in the freezer, you'll be avoiding kind of the crumbly texture that you get when you take a cheese out of the freezer. And we have some of that done with caraway and garlic. This is also super good because you just take it out and it's right away ready to spread on your crackers or your bread or eat it on its own. Put it in the soup or pasta, eggs, yeah. Here's some from December last year. They are getting a little bit of a color from the caraway, but they should still be good. Oh, look at this. Stinky cheese. This is Munster from 2019. It's for special people. It's really, really good though. It the is. inside yeah. isn't too yeah. bad. The outside is kind of the off part, but we do have some friends who really like the stinky cheese too. And especially <laughs> German people tend to really like it. Down here is some more softies. And then we have some more of the stinky cheeses, Red Lister, Munster, that kind of thing for those special individuals. 
So here we have some of that beautiful ash smoked Gouda cheese. It's uh, smoked with ash wood. It's Aww. so absolutely delicious. It smells it's like It's so, 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 so good. <laughs> and, oh, this is the best fried. Mm. It's like a mixture of sausage and cheese and fried. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is so delicious. Mm. So moving on, we would like to introduce you to our brine that we brined our goudas in this year. Instead of salting the curd like we have done, the traditional way is to put your cheese in a brine for eight to 12 hours for your gouda. The so salt brine is so saturated with salt that the cheese floats and our cheese rounds are so big you have to sort of twist it in and, and then it goes in. But as it rises to the top of the, of the liquid, you want to just sprinkle the very top of it with some salt so that that top of the cheese also gets salted. And we will be able to use that again next year and maybe the year after that and the year after that and the year after that. And the only thing that you need to do to clean it is to put it through a cheesecloth, just strain it out if it's dirty. And then some people will boil it, although we didn't do that this year. We just strained it through a cheesecloth and there. Some people don't even know how old their brine is. They just keep on using it. Wow. We found that making our goudas without salting the curd and using this beautiful brine made the best goudas that we have had so far. And next we have our wonderful, wonderful Bel Pernol cheese. And if you would like to make this fantastical, wonderful, bouncy ball elephant turd cheese. <laughs> it's like gold you, nuggets. You can go up to the corner of our video and see the recipe. These were made in August of 2020. We didn't find the need to make any more this year because as you can see, we still have a hoard of it. And moving up. There are people who come up with these amazing cheese recipes by accident or because of necessity. Amber had a brilliant idea by partly copying the idea of doing <laughs> shank leach. And she said, why don't we just make it easy? Put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the jar and stuff, 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 stuff all of your cheese into the jar and then Put a little more olive oil in and it fills up all the holes <laughs> and all the air pockets and then you just cap it and you put it in here. So And it's super, super good if you add a little bit of garlic to it. It's an everything cheese for everyday needs. Introducing the Tuckabye cheese. This it's is actually a pepper. Uh, pepper, pepper cheese from last year. It's Montre Jack mixed with red pepper flakes. It's a very, very flavorful. And you can actually see it's getting some crystals on it inside. And supposedly that is a sign, especially when you are into the aged cheddars, when you get crystals on your cheddars, that's a sign of good, good cheddar cheese. So I think that's what's happening here a little bit, even though it's not cheddar. <sighs> this is the mammoth. <laughs> there. Brienne came up with this idea. And I took this idea from Shank Leach which is dream cheese. Which is tiny, tiny little balls. That are rolled in spices. There's our twinkle, twinkle, little star variations for cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so we got three cheeses left so far in the cheese cave. This is our variation of Boris. We made this up actually a couple years ago um, when we wanted to make a Boris, but add some rosemary to it. And then what we actually ended up doing was rolling it in honey and storing it in plastic boxes. About every three days or so we would cover the cheese with more honey to help preserve it. That worked pretty good but it was very labor intensive so we just kind of skipped that part, made it rosemary boris cheese and when we like to dip it in honey then, then that's what we do. But it's also really good by itself too. And there are some still some cheddars back there, some cheddars from last year. Okay we got more tuckabye cheese. This is the feta cheese. We had lots of good success with the feta this year. Usually what we do with feta is make it into the rounds, in the basket molds, and then we put it in uh, plastic bags and then freeze it so that we don't need to worry about keeping it in a brine because it only lasts so long in the brine. So that's usually what we've done, put it in the freezer. 
but now at this point we're actually keeping it in the brine and having quite good success. Other times when we've kept it in the brine it has gotten um, kind of soft and it's not worked out so well so you just need to make sure your brine is at a good saltiness um, and then also add some calcium chloride and a bit of vinegar to your brine. And we have stored it also upside down so we switch it every once in a while so the top gets covered as well. We have a bit of a surprise back here. A blue cheese in this bucket that we have not opened for quite a few months. We are going to see what it looks like. Oh my goodness, that is so strong. It smells very strong. There's probably a lot of red bacteria in it as well, but it's, it has quite a natural rind. This is a Gorgonzola Dolce from last summer. Whoa. Whoa. It is so rustic. Wow. That'd be actually cool Kinda to... nice though. It is. It? It'd be cool to cut into it. This one, last summer, it was getting a lot of red bacteria linens, and so um, we just keep, kept on cutting out the red bacteria so it would stay blue. So this is the bad side. This is the really good side. Wow. Wow. Like, che serious cheese connoisseurs would probably find this very, very unique and good taste. It, look, at, there's a lot of red bacteria linens in there. Do you want to try it? Sure. Oh, wow. It's pretty much turning into, like, stinky cheese slash blue. So, like, Munster slash blue. Whoa, that is so flavorful. It's like a spice. Mm -hmm. and it's like you'd sprinkle it on and it's like a spice. Does it bite? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It would be very good sprinkled like on a salad. And it's almost like cheesies in a way. That's yeah. kind of like what the Munster tasted like. Yeah. Like it, it's almost like cheese whiz, but not so like mild and plasticky. It's actually the way cheese whiz should taste maybe. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good description. These are both blue cheeses. These are Stiltons that we made this summertime. And we've been storing them in the fridge, wrapped in cheesecloth. The best way that we enjoy to eat our Stilton at this age, so it's about two and a half months old, is making blue cheese chocolate or eating it with honey. Or really in lasagna. Beautiful. In a four cheese lasagna from American Test Kitchen, you can replace the gargonzola cheese with Stilton blue, yeah, which is what we have done. Mm. This is very, very good. People mm. are wondering what that is. Mm. Mm. Honeycomb. Mm. Mm. I'm going to have another bite. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry. Nothing like it. cheese and honey. Mm. So both together. It's really good with honeycomb. Hmm. If you want to see how this is made, go to the video up there about our bees that Amber looks after. This is like a cake. Hmm. This is also nice to cut like this. I bet Amber mm -hmm. wants to try some. Do you see this? Blue cheese, that's so good. This is at this favorite spot that you like it. Yeah. We should go over into the halloumi. Halloumi and the Floridanicas. So now we're over in our other cheese cave. This is the freezer and it works really well for freezing cheese at a certain place. It doesn't keep it as fresh, but it works. So here's one of our halloumis. Check out our video above to check out to see what we do with, with that. And so this, oh, this is halloumi that we colored with annatto seed. So you color it and shred it, and then it's right ready to use just the same way as you would use colorful cheddar cheese. And then this is our Floridanica. This is stuff that we froze instead of vacuum packing or putting into Tuckabai cheese. We have so much of it. One of our favorite family desserts is Floridanica cheese that we take out of the freezer, thaw, 
whip up with a beater or in a Vitamix and then mix with berries, honey, and a pinch of salt. And there you have your fruity quark cheese that we call dessert cheese. And below it, you will find our brie cheese. We like to freeze our brie at a month to month and a half old when it's nice and soft all the way to the center. And then it's ready to take out and make brie cheese bake. And hey, good. We also have cow cream and also, Lostrum. yeah, and Lostrum, it's, yeah. and also, if you have lots of strong cheese that maybe nobody's eating, it's helpful to shred it up and in little bags, and it's ready to be used in small recipes um, that you want a zip in. And that's that. Yep. yep. All right. Whoa. Okay, cool. That concludes our Cheese Cave Tour 2021. We hope you enjoyed and hope to see you back next time. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell button and we hope to see you again soon. And go check out some of our other cheese videos. We have quite a few on YouTube now, but we will be making more so you can stay tuned for that as well. We look forward to sharing our cheese making experiences with you. Bye. Bye. Giving you the 2021 Cheese Cave Tour. Official. Right. All right. So if you'll make your way just okay. right this way. <laughs> right, 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 right. Let's do right, that again. Right, right. Okay. That's a really good idea. Okay, so. Noel cheese. Which we have a video of. Which oh, we have, we have a video of it. <laughs> don't, don't downplay it. <laughs> if you want to learn how to make You want to say this? Moving mm -hmm. up. Should, should I or you? This is my special recipe. Okay. Now, introducing. Pause. Lullaby. Oh. And good night. Introducing. Introducing oh, the no. quiet. <laughs> wow, that was you a girls real... are saleswomen. We got the <laughs> whole see all of it. There's so much. It's so good. Um, eggs and making, uh, mixing with your salsa for your chips. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Lene, you can do the Lene, same thing. Lene, yeah. Lene makes an amazing chip dip with this. Yeah. With cranberries. Oh, with cranberries, so a little bit of sugar, banana peppers, banana peppers, salsa, salsa <laughs> everything. <laughs> It's the most delicious. This dip, chip, make, mix that she came up with is the most delicious. You do not need salsa and you do not need sour cream. All you need is Tuckabye cheese and Lene to make your dip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you're selling Lene. <laughs> okay, moving on. What's this in the corner? Cave Tour 2021. We hope you really enjoyed it. <laughs> That, that concludes, concludes this, this video. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me think. Okay, okay. I'll say it. Go. <laughs> that concludes. What are you gonna we'll do? Just ready? We'll just say bye. Let's say bye. <laughs> no, we'll just say <laughs> bye. 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 <laughs> no. Okay, let's just say. Just bye. say bye. Not bye. Ready? <laughs> bye. Still funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> All right.